Ah. If you're watching this video, it's for one or more of three reasons. Either you just got a brand new mirrorless or DSLR camera and you'd like to learn more about throwing the right lenses on it, or you've already had one for a while but never really learned a whole lot about lenses and wanna know more, or like me, you're just an information junkie and you wanna learn about all matter of things that have no practical use for you. I just got this package back from UPS and I'm going to open it in a second, but first I wanna talk about lenses. Right now I am recording this with the Panasonic G GH5, which is a micro four thirds mirrorless camera. And depending on what camera you have, you might have a different sensor size. Micro four thirds is a term used to describe the size of the sensor picking up this image right now. On a Sony a7 III, the sensor size is full frame. So it's bigger than this micro four thirds camera. It's different for lenses that you throw on a micro four thirds camera than it is for lenses you might throw on a full frame camera. I have to buy lenses that are micro four thirds specific if I I want them to work natively with this camera. And as a result, I'm going to get a little bit different performance from my lenses. Right now on this GH5, I've got the Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter lens. It goes down to a f2.8 aperture. Now the aperture determines how much light the camera is letting in and how shallow the depth of field is. So you might notice behind me, the background, my office is pretty blurry right now. And that's because I'm in focus, which means everything in front of me and behind me is gonna be out of focus. With a full frame camera, I can actually get a shallower depth of field. Micro Four Thirds camera, since this is an f2.8, I think that makes the equivalent like a f5.6, you double the aperture. It also means that this 12 to 35 millimeter lens on this Micro Four Thirds camera is actually an equivalent of 24 to 70 millimeters on a full frame camera. So you know that with a full frame camera, you're going to have more access to a greater diversity of looks simply because it's very difficult to get down below 20 millimeters of focal length on a micro four thirds camera. You need very special lenses in order to do that. But what lenses do you actually want? Ultimately, you've got three categories of lenses. You've got your ultra wide angle lenses, which is what's in this box I'm about to break open. Ultra wide angle lenses are lenses that have the shortest focal length. Too wide, you start to get the fisheye lens. So you have your aspherical or non fisheye wide angle lenses, and you have your spherical lenses, like a fisheye. The fisheye look, you can't miss it, right? I'm gonna throw it up on the screen right now. That's what a fisheye lens looks like. GoPros kind of have this look. So that's wide angle, aspherical and spherical. Well, then you got your mid range. This gets mid range shots. It's what a majority of YouTube is shot on. Then you have your telephoto lenses, lenses that go out beyond 50 millimeters. And these are used to shoot wildlife. So you might need a 70 millimeter lens all the way up to a 140, 240 millimeters in order to get that bird that's like a mile over there in a tree. I don't really need a telephoto lens for any specific reason. I'm probably never going to get one. And then you have your prime lenses and your zoom lenses. This is a zoom lens. It goes from the 24 millimeter equivalent to the 70 millimeter equivalent. Now that was the first lens I got. It's what's known as a kit lens. It came with the camera. And this is a great kit lens. Normally kit lenses are like shitty and they're not really useful. But this one is one of the best lenses that you can throw on a GH5. But if you want to upgrade your image quality or you want to get a look that has a bit more character to it, then you're going to need to ditch the kit lens and get an aftermarket lens like this Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter. This lens is amazing. It's what every single YouTuber is telling you is the best lens. It's the YouTube lens. Now, the reason that I wanted to get this is because it goes all the way down to F 1.8, which is a lot of light. This camera doesn't do so well in low light conditions. And if I bump the internal camera settings for light exposure, I ISO, I'm going to get a lot of noise in the image and a noisy image is no fun. So I wanted to get a lot more light into the scenario without having to introduce noise. And to do that, I needed a lower F number on the aperture. This lens also has a lot of characteristics to it. The, what it does to light, what it does to color, what it does to your image is beautiful. It's known as an art lens. And when I use it, I get a generally better image quality than I do from this Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter. Not that this thing's anything to sneeze at, but this is 
actually a Canon EF lens, so it'll natively snap on any Canon full frame camera. If you wanna use a lens like this on a micro four thirds system, you need something to convert this lens down to the micro four thirds system. If I simply adapt the size down, it's not going to let in as much light as it possibly can. I can actually reduce the full frame equivalent effect by using what's called a speed booster. This is a speed booster. It's by Metabones. It's called the Metabones Ultra 0.71X. So when I slap this on this camera and then I put this lens on top of that, I'm reducing the full frame equivalent effect. By how much? By 0.71. So since this is an 18 to 35, that gives us 36 to 70 millimeter equivalent. But times 36 by 0.71 and you get something more like 26 or something like that, 27. Let me do the math on that right quick. Got it. When I throw the speed booster with this on this camera, I'm getting an equivalent of 25 millimeters to 50 millimeters instead of 36 to 70. And instead of going from an F 1.8 to an F 3.6, I probably go to something more like an F 2.5, which is a lot of light. The problem is when you use a speed booster or adapter like this and a full frame lens, you're losing the ability to autofocus. This lens doesn't autofocus very well in general, even if I threw it on a full frame camera. And when you try to use autofocus with this, it's pretty loud. It doesn't sound like it should, but it's still a great lens to use. It's taught me a lot about manual focusing with the focus ring shooting on the fly. So I've become a way better manual focuser because of having this lens. I shot a majority of my honeymoon on this lens. Generally, you should learn how to manual focus. If you're creating videos out there or you consider yourself a videographer, like it's a skill that you should pick up. But today I'm finally solving my micro four thirds to full frame equivalent problem and getting that ultra wide angle with this, the Laowa 7.5 millimeter lens. Booyah, come on, show me the juice. Okay, this is I guess this is like a pad to put my lenses on or something. That's what I'm guessing it is. I really have no idea. We've also got this Optics Care cleaning kit. I always get the upgrade to the cleaning kit because I just feel like you can never have enough cleaning stuff around for these lenses. Then I got this Lens Essentials filter kit. This came free with the lens, so might as well use it. Although they might suck. Not quite sure. And then we've got the Laowa itself. 7.5 millimeters, F 2.0. This thing lets in a lot of light and it is ultra wide. Let's open this bad Larry up. Got my trusty dusty lens pad, which I always use. Watch this not be a lens pad. Someone's gonna be in the comments like, no, you idiot. Oh yes, all right. Holy shit, this thing is really small. Thanks lens manufacturer for vacuum sealing a lens. I didn't want it to go bad. What the flying f Oh, there it is. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, the Laowa 7.5 millimeter F 2.0 for the micro four thirds system. Look at the size difference between the Sigma and this Laowa. It's even tinier on the inside. Now, the first thing that you wanna do with any new lens, unless you're like completely anal about your image quality and you feel like it's gonna ruin it, is throw what is known as a UV filter on the front of it. A UV filter is pretty much clear, so it's just like a lens protector. And I wanna protect this lens so that I don't have to clean the actual glass on the lens. I can just clean the UV filter and if it ever gets unmanageably dirty, then I I can take it off and get a new one. Look at this tiny, dainty little UV filter. It's so small. Let's throw that on the front of this thing. Okay, now we're in business, baby. Let's throw it on there and see how it looks. Holy shit, this thing is wide, like really wide. You can see my key light in it now. Oh my God. Let me move this light and get rid of some of this trash so that we can finish the video. So what's different about this image now? Well, we've got a lot of distortion at the edges of the image. This weirdness that you're about to see is just natural to wide angle lenses. And this is what I wanted. This is why I bought this lens. Now there are a lot of lenses that go all the way down to seven millimeters for the micro four thirds system. I chose this one because it is 
very affordable. It's only like $500 for the brand new lens compared to like a thousand for some of the other really awesome seven millimeter lenses. Doesn't have a zoom. It's got manual aperture on it. So I actually have to set the aperture on the lens versus the camera, which is what I normally do. And it doesn't have autofocus, but that's fine for me because I've been getting my manual focus practice in with this. And when you're shooting at seven millimeters, right? Your usable focusing distance is very short before you're at infinity focus. Infinity focus just means that like, no matter how far back I get, I'm probably not gonna be out of focus. This lens goes from less than a foot all the way up to about six feet before it starts hitting infinity focus. But this thing only goes like about a, a meter, meter and a half before it hits infinity focus. So I don't really need to worry about the manual focus so much because as long as I'm more than a meter and a half away from the lens, I'm going to be in focus with infinity focus. I got this lens so that I can get this wide angle shot, this wide angle view, see more of the background. I'm still going to use these two lenses. So if I need autofocus or I need dual image stabilization, which this lens has, or I need a little bit wider, but not this wide for my shot, I'm gonna go with this Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter. If I need beautiful, amazing, breathtaking images, and I just want the best lens in my kit, I'm reaching for this Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter. So just to recap, we have three different types of lenses that you could want to use. You got your wide angle, your middle range, and then your telephoto lenses. Now, if you've got a micro four thirds camera like the Panasonic GH5, these micro four thirds system, they're going to take any lens that you throw on it and you're going to double the aperture, double the focal length. If you've got a full frame camera, you've got all the benefits. You've got great low light performance. You can throw pretty much any lens that you're going to buy on it. It's just a lot more advantageous for those reasons, but full frame cameras over overheat. They can't put as much features in a full frame camera as they do in this GH5 just because they got that big sensor and anything that's going to cool that sensor as it as it shoots. So there's a lot of reasons why you would want to go with a micro four thirds and I certainly have chosen to. I had to learn all this information the hard way, right? It's It's been five, six months into my filmmaking career and I had to pour over YouTube videos and Reddit forums and all this shit to figure out what the answer to all these questions are. And I'm happy to speed up your journey into film filmmaking or making better videos. So if you've got a question that you feel like I could answer now that I've learned all this stuff, just leave it in the comments. I'd be happy to answer it or make an entire video about your question. And of course, I'll shout you out in that video when I answer the question. So all questions are welcome. If this video was helpful, if it taught you something that you're going to use, please like and then subscribe to the channel so you can get more help. Make sure to ring the bell because otherwise for some weird, awful reason, YouTube won't notify you about these videos unless you ring the bell after subscribing. With that said, I've been Circa for Full Stack Creative. This has been the Laowa 7.5 millimeter wide angle lens for the Micro Four Thirds system. And all of us will see you in the next video. Peace out.